another quality roach. Morning. Well, we're on the banks of the mighty Trent again. It's a lovely Sunday morning. It's October. Uh, the breeze has got up far more choppy than I wanted it to be. And we are going to be fishing in the backwater, almost opposite the forest ground. We'll just scan around that if you've not seen it on the start. So we've got the Nottingham Forest Football Club to my left, opposite. And then to my right, you've got the mighty Trent Bridge. Just about see that over the sunshine. Lots of boats, lots of walkers, lots of runners. Shearing the water today, but it's windy and choppy. I'm a little bit out of the breeze here. I managed to get behind some bushes. And uh, I'm fishing a backwater that I've used to fish years ago. And this backwater, although it's not that visible, unless you come and actually pour a rock line in it, it's had lots of fish over the years. Bream, tench, carp, chub, roach. It has got big shoals of roach in here. Uh, we used to get a lot of bream in, this, in these pegs as well. Lots of skimmers, fishing ground bait, uh, maggot, emp, tears, caster. Um, so today we're going to be fishing. I've bought some maggots, uh, reds and whites. We have emp and tears, which I've been feeding already. And we have a pint of casters. So the normal Trent fodder. But I've also got some leftover, leftover match bait. Got some expanders and some micros. So I'm going to be feeding a few of those as well because the roach love those as well. Uh, but my main focus really is probably fishing double maggot of a casters emp and tears as bait. Feeding decent pouch falls in. Fishing slightly downwind so it affects the pole less. Probably two or three meters down, downwind and I'm trying to fish seven meters um, where we can really. Possibly a bit closer, but I know there's a lot of weed uh, a little bit closer in, so I'm trying to avoid that really. And we've already had a couple of puts in. I've caught a lovely roach already, about eight ounce. First roach I've caught on double maggot. So that's a great start. I'm hoping the wind dies off a, bit, a little bit later. But we've set up uh, quite a heavy duty rig because of the wind with a big float, Olivet on. We'll go through the rigging in a bit more detail later. Let's hope. Those big roaches that are going to carry on and get bigger. But to get eight ounce fish on the first first fish, pretty good. So we've got probably 10 foot of depth on. And it's the deeper swims that I think are going to hold the bigger roach on the trench at the moment because the water's quite clear. Although we've had quite a lot of rain this week, the water's up about a foot on normal. It's got a little bit of colour in it. I was almost going to go barbell fishing. But it's forecast sunshine today. But I thought it's a swim I wanted to come and fish for a while and film filming here. Hopefully we'll get some decent roach. And we're looking for those pan fish again, aren't we really? Pan to two pan roach. <laughs> Dreamland anything bigger than that. But we're having the olivette on and the rig sinks instantly. I've got decent control over it, even with a choppy wind. I've got a long bristle, long fine bristle on. I 
I can hold back against the float and the Olivet and keep the rig really still. But it's very choppy today. It would be near and impossible to run a stick float down. Waggly you could probably get away with. Oh yeah, we're in. Not as big as the last one. Little perch. That's what I was expecting to catch first parade. <laughs> I've brought some ground bait with me. That I might feed. Lovely, lovely roach. This is a great start. So if the wind settles down a little bit, you should be able to feed by hand. It's a lovely place to fish though, fishing. I mean, at the moment, hardly anybody fishes down here. It's a shame really, because there's plenty of fish. It hasn't quite got the amount of skimmers it used to have, but there's plenty of other fish, roach and perch. At the moment, the wind's hit, whistling through under the under the bridge. Yeah, looks like a nice one. Is it a perch or is it going to be a roach? It's another good roach. So we've been fishing, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? With a three good roach and a perch. I'm not gonna feed any maggot at the moment. Just concentrate on the empenteers and the caster. I'm feeding a good portion of empenteers every every couple of minutes. Every fish, every gentle run through. There are lots of big fish living in these backwaters, just out of the main flow. I've had them on before. Unfortunately, they go straight to the middle of the river. And getting them out on a pole tack tackle is very difficult. So let's, I mean, they're few and far between. You don't get many of them. You don't get them every time you come. So I've got about 10 foot of depth on, but it's got a weedy bottom, so I can't go right down really. Normally there's a lot more boats than this, but because it's choppy, I think they've all given it up. Besides, it's hard work in this wind. Another quality roach.
Oh yeah, it's a better one. Is it going to be a perch or is it going to be a roach? It's a perch. The stripey. Nice fish though. It's probably a million of them in here. Nice fishing a heavy rig like this with Olivet on. Instantly down on the fish. You wouldn't really expect them to come up in the water in these conditions anyway, but we can keep them down. MPT should keep them down, hopefully. Not feeding that many casters at the moment, because there's roach already in the swim. We'll try and get them to take the tears if we can. Another one. It's fighting hard, this one. Another perch. But there's some a lot bigger than that in here. Look, we've been fishing about 40 minutes so far. I think we've got 20 odd fish. Um, nothing on tier at the moment. Can't get not a bite on it at all. I've had a couple of bleak and small roach on maggot. But I've had seven or eight nice quality roach. Nice start to the session, anyway. I could try double maggot again. Oh, that was a solid clunk. Bump that one. One. Lots of them smaller, smaller roach in here on maggot. When one maggot drops off, this leaves one maggot. And very, really either get a little bleak or a small roach. That's probably what the perch are chasing in. Striking a little bit early, and that's not quite taking it, so I've bumped, bumped a couple in the last few minutes. Slightly better one.
start feeding a few casters again. Hopefully draw some more roach back in. I think the perch have overtaken the peg at the moment. Biggest roads for a little while. So I wonder if a pike's been through. Been a bit of a lull. Good to see anything about near Trent Bridge. No comments down here. Just a few sessions down here recently and there not seen any cormorants. nice ones and two puts in beautiful they definitely disappeared for a bit and now they're back yeah what we want three ounce plus fish so at the moment they're just taking a single maggot but I'm feeding casters again which has stopped for a bit so maybe it was the casters But there are a lot of pike down here, so. Solid clunk. What's a better one? Let's take a quick look at this one. Look at that one. <laughs> Beautiful.
ya. Big to lift. He's got him. Yeah, he's dropped off in the net. Oh, lucky. Yeah. I've got the shoal there in front of me now. Roach it every foot in. Oh, and he gets a perch. Where you come from? Lots of little fish down there as well. So we've been about an hour so far. We must have 40 odd fish already. This fish is tremendous. Lots of small fish. Probably about 10 nice roach, three ounce and above, up to eight ounce. So great first hour. So one little low period where I think there might have been a pike come through. Or, you know, big perch maybe. Or Xander these days. Cast it. Looks like a better fish. Oh, we've got a skimmer yes you don't see many these days we've got one so back in the 80s these fish well there were millions in here and they were great weight weight builders you'd have a net full of roach but you would have a lot of them in there as well that one's a hybrid Lovely. Yeah, back in the 80s, absolutely used to sack up in the trench. All in these free, free fishing areas. Uh, I mean, this is free fishing here again today, it's lovely. Could just come down, catch a few fish. Oh, yeah, another one. Oh, and it's come off. Come off that one, that was a decent fish as well. A bit of slime on the line. Could it have been a small skimmer again? Have we got the skimmers in the swim? Catch you nicely on caster now.
So we'll have a quick look at the rig then. So it says quite a heavy, heavy float, what a two gram, and that's a Mark Pollog Fox MP9 float. Don't use them very often, but for olivet fishing on the river, eight, nine, ten foot deep, that's that's uh, about perfect for it. The line, the main line is three and a half pounds. And then we go down to the olivet. So the olivet is a one and a half gram. Three running on the line. And then I've got a series of droppers. Shirt button style. Down to my trace. The trace is a three pound line. And then I've got a size, it says size 16 on the packet. It's more like an 18 hook. So that's the setup for today. It goes straight down to the bottom. Then the last two feet drops through the water. And I can hold back against the float and the Olivet in the very slow current. There's hardly any current because we're in a backwater. So I can hold back a little bit and lift and drop and get this bait to go up and down in the water uh, on, the, on the lower part, part anyway, and, and induce a bite. So it works really well. Catch plenty of fish anyway. Just lay the rig in. Olivet will go straight down, float cock straight away, that's how quick, quick it to settles. And then it's that last two feet with the fish are feeding in the layers. When I say I get a fish on the drop, it's on the drop after the layer of the Olivet as it as the bait's falling through the water in the last couple of feet. But I can't quite get to the bottom here because there's a lot of weed along the bottom, so you're dragging into that all the time. Fishing just above that. Here we go. We'll get some nice quality roach. Beautiful. So I'm getting a bite every put in. Attacked by a wasp. I'm half hoping them skimmers are going to move in. Get one, there's normally a shoal. shoal. They're not all on their own. But they do seem very skittish in the trent. You know, if you get one or two, that you don't get any more than that. I think people are catching, catching a few on the feeder in the deeper water pegs, but for healthy stocks in the Trevor in the in the river, you want to see lots of skimmers of that size. So. You know the spawning well. Because in the 80s there were millions of them. Oh yeah, that's a better one. On caster. Plenty of elastic coming out on that one. Oh and it's come off! I don't believe it. That's the biggest fish we've done today and we've lost it. Roach, look up. Roach all look brand new. Nobody's fishing for them. I think only me. <laughs> I'm gutted about the one we've just lost. Oh. And the way it was fighting all, it felt like a, it felt like a roach. Never know that.
Oh, that was either dace or a chub. That man's catching his two ounce fish. While I wait for great granddad to turn up. But did I have him on and lost him? Your fish, absolutely beautiful. First bite on tear. And it's a big dace. <laughs> Up a nice dace as well. Oh, what's a nice tear roach. Wow, that's a lovely fish. I know they're in the swim. I'm getting them to set the bait though. This is on a tear. Look at that beauty. Very close it look. Now that that's gorgeous. Look at that, looks brand new. But I'm not getting many bites on tear. But after that roach, I'm gonna stick on for a bit longer. They're the ones we're on. Started to get a few indications, but it took a while for them to come onto it. It's been a couple of hours now. We've got a speedboat speeding past. We're not even allowed to do that here. <laughs> Somebody's not read the river rules. Four mile an hour, it is. So we've been fishing about three hours now. We've probably got. Probably got 80 fish. a bit quiet again. I just wonder if we've got a pike in this one again. Quite possible. The wind has been getting really strong as well, really choppy. It gets much worse, I'll have to call it a day. But um, we'll probably see it out for another 45 minutes and hopefully pick a few more nice fish up. And years ago, I used to fish this stretch as kids. I mean like, you know, 10, 10 years old and we get like 100 gudgy. Just fishing really close in. Great fun. Of course there aren't as many gudgy as there used to be, but they're still here. You still get the odd one. See if we can pick some of them big fish up before we finish. It's a lovely mild October day. It started off about 10 degrees this morning, so it was chilly first thing, but I decided to come a bit later on and have a door up early morning chill, so I've come middle of the day. Still got a bleak and snatching the caster and I'm struggling for a bite on tear. I put a maggot on and I, 
getting little roach and bleak. So, not had the quantity of the big fish in the swim, but I have lost two really nice fish. There's a bleak on there now, look. Oh, no, gone. He's held it up on the drop. Don't think I've had the quantity of big fish in this swim. I think if I fish this swim again, I might fish chop worm and maybe even uh, put a lot of ground bait in. See if we can get them going that way. Police are having fun. Proper urban fishing this. Still feeding it empties and caster. So I'm putting in nearly a full pot of maggot just to try and uh, preoccupy the bleak. So I've caught a lot of small fish out of this one, not many big fish. A line of them in. Hopefully, that'll either preoccupy the bleak or bring some big fishing. I'm going to go over that with a tear. So nothing on the tears again, so I've gone back on, I've put a triple maggot on. And hopefully we can all avoid the bleak and pick off something better, maybe a decent perch or And we've caught a skimmer on that triple maggot. Lovely. So maybe it's just a bit late in the season for tears. I don't really want them. So a big pot of maggot, triple maggot on the hook, and we've caught a skimmer. If I catch any bleaks and get another pot of maggots as well. <laughs> it's lovely fishing this is. But to bite every put in. It started about 11 so we avoided the early morning cold period. Every put in we've uh, had a bite. So. Now that seems to have dulled the bleak and so now we're going to put another pot in. Another three quarter pot. Should that encourage a few more bream?
and we'll go with another bunch of maggot straight over the top of it It's been nice comfortable fishing today because I've got behind these bushes to my right I'm sheltered for the wind even if the, the pole's not because I'm fishing at an angle with the wind I haven't got a lot of pressure on the pole either just presenting the bait just a little bit more tricky with it and it's really choppy can't really lay on in this swim because of the weed on the bottom Still getting bleak then. Wonder how many uh, maggots need to put in to feed these off. Probably a lot more than I've brought. Another pot full. That's the third in about 20 minutes. I thought that one back now then. <laughs> Triple maggot. Right, looks like the clouds are building up. See some grey ones coming over. Winds are getting stronger. So I think we'll have one last fish and we'll call it a day. It's been a lovely few hours. It's a lovely place to fish. If you've seen any of the other videos of fishing in, on the embankment and in front of the forest ground, little loads of fish. And for October, it's quite mild, but a bite every put in and it's all free fishing. So it is a lovely place to fish. I think if um, learn from anything from this one, if I'd been stick floating today, I'd have had a waggler as well and gone further out if the roach had gone a bit quiet. So, but I've been bitted a bit, quite a lot with bleak, so I really need to bring some more bait with me next time to try and feed the bleak off. Probably put some ground bait on the bottom, maybe even a chopped worm line or something like that. So, if I was coming for a full day, I'd have a chopped worm line, I'd fish a waggler a bit further out um, when, it, when it goes a bit quiet, but Maybe a ground bait and chop worm line won't be a bad idea. Because there's probably a lot of lot of perch in here as well. Some big perch. But we'll have one more fish, then we'll get uh, packed away and we'll have a quick look what we've caught. Fast bite. Probably a bleak, but I missed it anyway. So we've got a lovely net of fish here. Easy 10 pan. Got 30 or 40 nice roach. Yep. That's probably the biggest one. 
good at 10 to 12 ounce. Some nice skimmers, some nice perch. Some cracking fish in there. But for a few hours, we're a free fishing area on, on the trench, lovely. Get and put back. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's been lovely to get back on the Trent again. Um, fishing near Trent Bridge, near the forest ground. Conditions are really tough today. So fishing the pole at about seven metres is about the best I could do with a heavy rig. I would have struggled with any other method apart from feeder really today. Um, but stuck at it, we caught probably about 100 fish. Um, 20 or 30 bleak in there, 30 or 40 roach, loaded perch, dace. Um, and then a couple of small bream as well, which was nice to see. If I fished it again, probably fish with ground bait, maybe chop worm line, something like that. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll speak again soon. Bye for now.